Hi Math 111, this is our video for section 1.3. This is a really short section because we only have to think about one thing in this section and that is solving equations using our graphing calculator. So uh, these are equations that we don't know how to solve them for x doing algebra. So what we can do is use the power of our calculator to help us find uh, to solve for x and find the solutions uh, of that equation. So uh, this is again section 1.3 and it's on page 26. If you'd like to read an example before uh, watching this video or after, whatever you like, uh, you can see uh, example number one which is on page 26 and they'll go through an example which is very similar to the one we are going to do together. So in uh, in this section, what we'd like to do is be able to, like I said, use our calculator to get solutions to an equation we don't know how to solve. So let's consider an example. Okay, so let's say we have an equation, and let's make it kind of scary, right? Let's make it something like this. And uh, this is so far not an equation because I don't have an equal sign, right? Uh, this is just an expression of x. Okay, but let's say maybe that I wanted to uh, solve an equation that looked like this, right? This is now an equation. And this has some kind of a solution. Remember, a solution to this equation, uh, a solution is a value of x. Uh, that makes the equation true. Right? This is sort of the same as saying there would be a value of x that would satisfy the equation. Remember we've used that word before. We could say that there is a value of x. We could plug in here and here so that this would make a true statement, right? So that we, we would get this left side would equal zero and the right side equals zero, which is true, right? Um, but how would we find that value of x that actually would be a solution or the x that we could plug in that would make this a true statement? That can be a little bit tricky because notice this isn't something we really know what to do with, right? You may be thinking to yourself, well, it's got three terms on the left and let's factor it. Well, okay, but that's not a square right there. That's not x squared. That's x cubed, right? So this isn't like, this isn't a quadratic equation, if you remember what that means, right? Something of this form. So uh, we don't really have any al techniques for algebra to be able to handle this. So let's see if we can use our handy dandy super fancy calculator here to help us with that. So notice for a second, if I instead wrote something like this, if I wrote, um, x to the third minus 8x plus 1 equals y, right? These two equations are similar, slightly different, right? Uh, this first one is an equation just an x, right? Uh, it's an expression of x equaling 0. The second one, remember, is an equation in two variables. There's an x, there's x's, and there's a y, right? So it's two variables here. This one, the second one, has a graph because it's an equation in two variables and so this one has a graph, right? So this we can say has a graph. Okay, this one does not have a graph because there's not a second variable, right? There's only x's, there's no y's. And to graph on our screen we have to have x's and y's, right? Because we have two axes, the x and y axis. Okay, so this one has a graph, this one does not. But let's see how they're related for a second, right? So this second one is a graph, or is an equation in two variables, right? And it's really similar to the first one here. The only difference is that in this first one, the y has been replaced with a zero, right? Yeah? So if, if in this second equation we started with this, we could get the first equation by saying just let y be zero, right? So uh, maybe we should just make a little summary about that, right? We get uh, above equation. by uh, changing y to 0. Right? Well, that sort of, this phrase, changing y to 0 or letting y be 0, should s sort of ring a bell, right? What do we do when we're letting y be 0? Right? So this phrase, changing or letting y be 0 or setting y to 0, 
right? This like phrase of letting y equal zero, right? That's come up before, right? That's actually what we do when we do what? When we find x-intercepts, right? Yeah, so this sort of means the same thing as this is what we do when we find x-intercepts, right? So what that means is that this first equation up here, right? This equation is really just the first step in the process of finding the x-intercepts of the graph of this equation, right? Okay, so if we want to find a solution to this equation up here, right, this one here, if we want to find a solution to this thing or find the value of x that makes it true, that what that means, that's the same thing as doing what? Finding the x-intercepts of this equation, the one that has a graph, right? Finding the x-intercepts of this thing, okay? All right, so how do we find the x-intercepts of that thing? Well, we said it has a graph. We can make use of our calculator, right? We can plug this in and we can find x-intercepts, okay? So let's uh, maybe see what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be finding, find x-intercepts of y equals x to the third minus 8x plus 1, right? Because again, finding the x-intercepts of this equation, or the graph of this equation, would say let y equal 0. Well, let y, letting y equal 0 and solving is the same as finding the solution of this equation up here. Okay, so let's turn our calculator on. And I still have my x absolute value bar thing from last time, uh, so I'm going to clear that out. So let's go to y equals and clear. Okay, I want to enter this equation. So I need to enter x to the third. Well, I don't have a cube button, right? I have to use my caret for a power. So that's that little, the caret is the little um, pointy one right here underneath your clear button. Okay, so x to the third minus 8x plus 1. Okay, again, if you need to see how I entered all of that, remember you can go back about 20 seconds and watch it all over again. Let's hit graph and see what happens. Ooh, that's nice, right? This one's got a different shape that maybe you haven't seen something like this before. The reason it's something new is because there's a higher power of x here, and in 111 we'll talk about why that's true. Okay, but notice that there are in fact some x-intercepts, right? One, two, and three, right? So let's see exactly how we can find those, okay? All right, so uh, let's see, I'm gonna get a new piece of paper. Great. So to find the x-intercepts for those uh, for those three locations, right, for this graph here, uh, I can use the calc menu right here, right, right above the trace button here. So remember that the uh, way to find x-intercepts is found in the calc menu. So x-intercept uh, can be found using, well, using what command? If you go to the calc menu, it's the zero command, right? Using zero command. Oops, sorry. In calc menu. Okay, great. So let's uh, select zero, hit number two. And remember, it asks us to be to the left side of a zero and to the right side of, of the zero, of the x-intercept. Remember, zero means the same thing as x-intercept. So I'm on the left side. Make sure you're just to the left of it, right? Enter. And now get to the right of it. What you're doing is you're giving yourself a little sort of area for the calculator to find an x-intercept. It doesn't know which one you want until you tell it around where to look, right? So that's what we're doing now. You're to the right of it. And then on guess, just try to get as close as you can. I don't know. Those seem equally far apart, so let's just hit enter. Aha! We have one. Well, notice it doesn't actually tell us that y is zero there, and it should be at an x-intercept, but that's because your calculator approximates. Okay, it's hardly ever able to give you an exact answer. It has to just approximate. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. Our first x-intercept is, let's do three decimal places just to be um, thorough. Eight, eight, nine, comma, and it's, you know, that's negative 2 times 10 to the negative 12. That's pretty close to 0. So we'll just give it the benefit of the doubt. Okay. 
All right, let's go ahead and do the next one. Do we have to even look really too much at this one? Maybe, let's see. Well, let's try. Second calc, zero, go down to two. Let's go to the left side. Enter, and to the right side, enter, and yes, just try to get close. Ah, okay, so there's that one at negative point, nope, not negative, just point one, two, five, comma, zero. There we go. And there's one more, so let me clear my uh, history here so you can see exactly what I'm pressing. So second calc. Hit number two for the zero. Again, if this is too fast, remember you can uh, pause and find the buttons. I'm gonna go over a little bit. I'm on the left side, enter. I'm on the right side, enter. And then get close as you can for that guess. And here's the last one, 2.764 comma zero. Okay. Those are not nice, right? Those are not nice uh, x intercepts here. Um, but that's wasn't we weren't expecting something nice because we didn't know how to solve this using some algebra, right? So we had to use our calculator, which again only can give estimates. It can only approximate. It can't really ever give us exact answers. Okay. So what that means here is that if we look at this original equation we had here, remember that's solving that is the same as getting the x-intercepts of this equation. That means that the solutions of this are the three values of x we just got on the next page. Okay. So we can say um, here the solutions of x to the third minus 8x plus 1 equals 0 are the following three values of x. x equals negative 2.889 comma 1 point, oops, 1.25 or uh, 2.764. Okay, great. So three values of x that can uh, solve this equation. You plug any of these values of x in here and you'll get a true statement, meaning you'll get zero on the left side equals already a zero on the right side. All right. If you need more uh, review for that one, again, look over example one on page uh, 26, right? Example one, page 26, uh, and on to video for section 1.5.